In this video, we will kind of follow up with the last video we did, which was how we got the file received name here. And now we actually want to do something for the first time, create a dynamic send port. So let's say we want to take one of these messages that we received, and now we want to send it back to the disk. So we're going to insert a send shape in each of these two branches. And we're not going to transform the message or anything. We're just going to send it directly to uh, the disk. So we're going to create a new port here. Sorry, I, I usually meant to do new configured port there. We'll go through the little wizard and we'll call this send employee. Port send employee. And this time, that's OK. But here's what we're going to do for the first time. Now notice there is no uh, dynamic here. So we're still going to say specify later. But now, watch this. After you've added it over here, you can click on the port. And there actually is a property window for the port. And over here, you see a thing called binding. Right now, we see direct, specify later, specify now. I think the reason we saw that is this was supposed to be a send port, not a receive port. So if I come back over here, I forgot to check the word send here. Okay. So now that we put the word send in, you can make it dynamic. See, the word dynamic did not appear when you had a receive port. Now you can also specify the pipeline, which is going to be XML. But now we can do some other cool things. So we're going to send our messages here. Why didn't that? Oh, the reason this isn't connecting is I've never told it what, what type of message we have here. So if this is a new employee, I need to make this a new employee. And this is a update employee. Okay, so now we connect that. And again, this will not connect because we need two operations like we did before. So I'll make a new operation here, and the second one will hook to that place. Okay. So the other thing I did before I started this video that we didn't have in our prior one, I added this little logic here, a new variable called var branch, and just to tell me what branch of logic I'm following through. So it says add employee branch, and then this branch I call it the update employee branch. Okay. Now, before we send our message, what we want to do is actually specify where on the disk we want that message to go. So we're going to add we could actually put it in this expression shape. Let me think just a second. I think it has to be on a construct. I haven't done this lately, so let's just for fun try this here. If we put here port send parentheses, uh, maybe not. Okay, so what you can do here is put address, and then that, now there's a special syntax here. It's called file. It's almost like HTTP colon slash slash. And then you give it the name of the file on the disk where you want it to go to. So let's go make up a new disk file name here. So I have here the add employee. And let's call this the employee out directory. Misspelled it, though. OK, so I'm using this to copy the name of the file I just created and actually stick it right here in my uh, program. And so since I have the backward slashes, I have to put the et sign here, or I have to escape them. I prefer the et sign myself. And then here, I can put the name of the file, like uh, meal demo employee out. And I still need something to make it unique, so I'm going to put the message ID dot XML, semicolon. And I'll put an underscore there. So I don't have any red anythings in here right now. And one thing we'll do here is we'll say Neil Demo add employee or new employee out. Okay. And then they'll copy this line of code and we'll stick it in the second box. And this one we'll call UPD update employee out. So what that's going to do is it's like here we use the message and we had context fields. 
Well, there's also context fields on the port, but there's only two of them. So when you type the port name here, notice you can pick from the list, you can put the parentheses, and then there's only two items that you can pick. And what you want to pick is the address. Okay. So now, let's save and compile this. I think we're ready to go. Let's just do a quick build, make sure it compiles. The build was successful. And I want to redeploy the project, or the whole solution. It took about four seconds, and that was successful. So now, let's go back to our drop. No. Well, first of all, I want to get rid of the trace. I want to start all new here. Don't want any old traces laying around. Um, since I changed my orchestration course, what do I have to do? I have to restart BizTalk, right? So I need to go to my host and then do a restart. And then while that's running, or doing its thing, I'm going to go copy one of these two files. So I'm going to pick the update file and I'm going to drop it in the input directory. The file has now been consumed. Let's go check hat. Just a real quick way to see if we got any problems. And we do have a problem. It's 320. Something went wrong. So we're going to zoom in on this error message here. Okay, I think again that's a Neil human error. What happened is I added a port to the orchestration. It said there were no subscribers. Okay, that's our typical message when we have a routing problem. So if we go back to the BizTalk admin console and look at the orchestration and then do a refresh, you can see the orchestration went from a started state to an unenlisted state. And the reason for that is, is because I added a port. So we need to look at the binding again and we need to check our ports. And so since this is the first time you've seen a dynamic port, what happens here is it's th that port was already bound for us, but just because I added a port, for some reason BizTalk decided to unenlist the whole orchestration, which is kind of weird. So when you have dynamic ports, it creates these very long port names. It's called Property Schema Demo, which is my project name. Then it's got the version number of my project. Then it's got the name of the orchestration. Then followed by underscore a port, and then underscore the public key token, which is the short version of the strong name key file. Okay, so if we go down here to send ports and refresh, you can see that you'll have this long, long, long port name right here. Okay, so it's kind of unfortunate they're so long, but it does give you an idea of where it came from. So we need to start that port. We need to start our orchestration then we need to drop our file again. Or actually, if you recall, our file is probably in a suspended state, so we can actually go here, uh, go to suspended messages, like here, suspendable resumables, and then we can, I'm sorry, this is going to go slightly off your video, so I have to raise the screen up. Right here I can just say a resume instance, which will not show on your screen, but there's a right-click option called Resume Instance. And I click that, and actually let's click Run again, so it disappeared. Go back to Hat, and let's refresh. So what we're looking at is this message here to see if what we just did fixed anything. And it looks like it did, yes. So here from 3.20 to 3.23, so there's a three-minute delay in this message. That's kind of interesting. So the message was actually originally received at 320, but it took another three minutes for it to actually get into the system, and that's because it was suspended. If you scroll over here, the suspended message is no longer there. So it doesn't really give you, I don't believe, the history here of why it would have taken three minutes. Let's just double check that. No, it'd be nice if it said here it was suspended and then some, if uh, Neil Walters resubmitted it and that kind of stuff, but it doesn't give us that level of detail. Um, I'm not sure what the terminated here would be. That, well, that's something else I must have terminated. Okay, so then here we have our orchestration completed, and then here we have our transmit. 
So now let's go back to our disk system over here. Let's go to the out directory, and you can see now the name of the file is demo, Neil demo upd. That that means I picked the update file, and then underscore. Now notice the message ID did not actually work properly, and I think that's because I probably should not have put an underscore there. So let's just double check that. If we go to a normal send port. Let's just say if we add a new a new port here, and we make it a file, yeah. See, it's message ID. There's no underscore. So since I put the extra underscore in there, it didn't recognize the magic word message ID, and it didn't really substitute it. Okay, so that's another mistake. I'll go fix in a minute. And the other thing we want to look at, well, we can look at the message. It's just going to be exact copy of the message we submitted. So what? really the purpose of this illustration was was to show you that you can actually give a name to the file that you want. Secondly, we can look at the trace. Oh, and I never changed the trace to show the branch that we went through. So there's two quick changes we will make to this orchestration and run it again. The first one is right here, this var branch, I want to actually include in my final message here. We need a couple plus signs to concatenate all this together. You, know, you can also put in here the uh, new line characters if you want. Okay. And then here, so we need to get rid of the, uh, I don't think the capitalization matters, but the uh, extra underscore did make a difference here. Okay, so I'm going to redeploy this and test it again. It shouldn't take long. So we do our deploy. While it's deploying, I'm going to restart the host. And while that's happening, I want to go to my out directory, delete that file delete my trace file. Okay, now I'm going to make sure my deploy worked and it has. And I'm assuming the restart of course that always works. So now I'm going to drop let's drop both files. So now let's drop two of these. And then let's go to the trace. And you can see uh, we have two trace 999s, this one and this one. And the first one says your file was called imp update one and you went through the update employee branch. The second trace says you dropped imp new data two and you went through the add employee branch. And then we go to the out directory and now you can see that the message IDs actually substituted the GUID of the message where I had heart, where I had coded in my program per, uh, percent sign message ID percent sign. So let me just show you this kind of maybe side by side here. Here's our line of code and here's the output. Okay, So you have to put the protocol here, file colon slash slash. Then you can say c colon biztalk demos slash add employee slash employee out slash then the neil demo and then it was either the word new or update, depending on which branch, branch of logic I went through, followed by underscore, followed by this message ID.xml. And the message ID XML, of course, is going to be a GUID of that message. And so I believe we can also go to hat and look for this 914, for instance. So we go to hat here, slide all the way over here. this case not the screen so I'm sorry we have to right click message flow oh well, this is actually the other message I believe hang on so here we have 914 and 1 dog 6 what I was looking for is too confusing to remember these numbers. So here's a message ID. I'm 
surprised we don't see that Charlie 3, Charlie 7 in our output message. Okay, well I don't see any obvious correlation right now between this message ID and the one in the file name, so it must be generating another GUID here. But anyway, what we've done in this video, just to recap, is we have gone to this orchestration and we created a port over here and we set the port's properties to dynamic, which you can see in the property window or you can see that when you go to configure the port. This option right here called dynamic. Okay, And then you can actually set the name of the file right here inside the program. And that's what makes it dynamic. This could be a variable basically. Now there are advanced versions of this called self-routing messages where actually fields in the message itself control where the message gets routed. But that's a more advanced concept that I don't frequently use in the real world so we're not going to cover that in this video.